Welcome everyone. I hope you're going to enjoy this webinar with us. This is, of course, the second part of the series called The Future of Digital Work Management is Simpler, Faster and Mobile. And today's topic will be more efficient work execution and management using mobile technology. I'm Dirk Janssen van Rensburg. I'll be your host. I'm the Managing Director for Pragma Research and, and Development. Um, and I'm going to start off this webinar again in similar style to what we've done in the previous session. Well, quickly just want to, well, want to share with you and touch on the question, is mobile technology and the adoption of that still on the rise and still very much, you know, a driving force and something that we need to keep our eye on and something that you guys need to invest in? And I'm going to look at, you know, I'm going to ask these two questions. Is, is, is this adoption, uh, you know, accelerating mobile tech adoption still happening and is economic pressures actually, you know, pressuring that to, for quicker adoption? And are people using mobile apps to actually drive their digital transformation? And I'm, I'm, and I'm going to share with you some findings that the, the people from Verdantex has, um, has found in this report called Global Corporate Survey of 2020. It happened towards the end of last year. And it's operational excellence, budgets, priorities, and tech, tech preferences. And as you can quickly see there, you know, most of the respondents was from North America and Europe. And are also represented with other parts of the world, also including you know South Africa and uh, South America as well. Um, and and they cover you know industries across you know many multiple industries as well. And what they what they found is that you know the the drive towards investment in mobile apps you know, has really shot up to you know quite high in, in terms of investment priorities. Um, and that is due to, you know, due to the economic pressures that everyone's under and due to the pressure that the COVID-19 pandemic is, is really putting on us, you know, as, as, as we saw last time as well, that you know, connected worker safety is and, and, and the health of, of the people in a company is still very much, is, is currently the, the top priority and you can ex understand that due to the, the COVID pandemic, but just below it, you know, it's a, it's a big focus on mobile apps. Um, and that is due to the investment in these technologies to enable remote operations and to ensure business continu continuity during these, these uncertain times. If we now shift our focus towards digital transformation, I think a lot of, lot of companies are currently also, you know, apart from needing to handle all these difficult external challenges, we're also forced to you know, go on this whole digitalization journey. And, and the question was asked, how many of these organizations do you see mobile technology as a form of digital innovation and very interesting to see that in it was rated as a top form of digital innovation currently and that's even higher than you know digital twin census you know, robotics predictive, predictive analytics and the interesting thing that i shared last time as well is that has doubled the, the significance of that has doubled in, in the last year so people are very much seeing that this wave of adoption of mobile technology is really just taking off and the next uh, piece of research I just quickly want to share with you, the question was also asked to this audience, how important are the following criteria when evaluating software applications for asset management? And I, I found this to be quite interesting. The top thing that people of organizations consider when they evaluate new, 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 new um, asset management software is actually the ability of these mobile apps to work offline, which, um, which is quite interesting. Um, you know, it's, higher than, you know, the, even if you look there down to, to the list, the quality of the user interface, I mean, that came in quite, quite low on this list. So for a certain reason, you know, audiences out there and companies out there are looking for mobile technology that can support offline capabilities. So that becomes a very crucial factor. And I'm going to ask Stefan, you know, our uh, head of uh, product development to actually share with us, you know, some, some of his thoughts and some of the ways that we within Pragma and within Anki are looking to solve this offline challenge. I'm handing over to Stefan and he's going to just quickly introduce again to us, you know, where our mobile technology fits in and then obviously I'll back a little bit offline, offline capabilities of mobile technology. Over to you, Stefan. Thank you, Dirk. Good morning. Good morning to everybody joining. Um, yeah, maybe just to start off again for those that uh, weren't part of the previous webinar. Just a quick look at, uh, you know, where does the mobile solutions that we talk about here fit into the bigger uh, on-key asset management landscape. So as we see in the picture there, you know, we've got the on-key uh, enterprise asset management system as the core system of record for, for our solutions where the intelligent asset register lives, uh, work management, work orders, costs, and all those things are managed. 
and then also the supplier and materials management capability for your for your spare part management that sits in the core and then bolted onto that is the on key insights capability um, where we have uh, our business intelligence and reporting uh, you know delivered through that platform and then um, next in line is on key action which is the one that we will be discussing today that's our rapid application development platform through which we deliver the mobile apps and other you know specialized apps on top of the core on key system and then just quickly on key integrate and on key connect which is uh, our integration solution to integrate with other third party systems and also our iot uh, connection capability with direct you know direct connection with assets to collect data from them respectively uh, Moritz, if you can move on to the next one, please. All right, and then quickly, now today we're going to discuss now our, our field engineer app and our work arranger app, uh, you know, in support of maintenance execution. And as Dirk mentioned, uh, you know, one of the key requirements these days is, is for um, mobile apps to also be offline capable. So our challenge from, from a product and software development perspective, you know, has always been that we, um, as far, especially as far as the apps is concerned, um, need to be able to provide apps that, that is now both offline capable. Um, different clients have different devices that they're using these solutions. So it needs to support a number of um, different devices, different platforms, you know, mobile devices, and ideally also your desktop uh, solutions. So we need to have that in, in the play. And then also um, from our side, be able to quickly develop these solutions and, you know, through the least amount of effort also maintain them. And the, and the solution to that for us has been, uh, you know, these progressive web apps that uh, that's become more popular over the past few years. And if you go and research that a bit, you'll see that there's actually quite a few um, well-known brands like Twitter and so on that also use this for, for their solutions. Um, we use the progressive web apps to build our mobile apps. And it's, as it's stating there in the, in the slide as well, uh, the technology behind this is, is from OutSystems, which is a rapid application development platform. So if we quickly go through the, the benefits, maybe I should just say at this point as well, this is the route we took. Uh, there's reasons why we, why we uh, rather use PWA versus native uh, Android and Apple, uh, Apple apps, you know, for the reason that it is actually quicker and, and more flexible for us to develop. So some of the benefits then, you know, firstly, uh, through these, through this technology, we get uh, an app that is immediately responsive in design, which means it, it uh, easily fits on different form factors. Uh, you can run it on different browsers, different physical devices, different operating systems, and the underlying technology takes care of all the um, nitty gritty for you to, to make that possible. Uh, these apps are offline capable, so you can, um, you know, for periods of time go offline and uh, your data won't be lost. Um, we've got some of these apps running, you know, at clients where they do, um, you know, surveys and assessments on sites. And uh, I think recently I've seen one case where a client had uh, almost 500 pictures taken with the app uh, in the offline mode that was then later synchronized back to Onkey. So that that's quite a strong capability. Um, you know, for users that are that are used to to apps. You know, no, normal apps that you would download through your app stores. You know, these these PWA apps give you that same feeling. So it's a, it's an app, um, you know, within which you can navigate, you know, it's, it doesn't have a browser feeling like a normal web page. Um, very other important capability is that um, these apps are uh, easy to, to roll out new changes to them. So, you know, through your, through the technology, whenever there's a newer version published, um, it automatically becomes available to the user and it's a really quick process to refresh it. So no more need for updating apps and you know, lengthy processes to get that in place. So your app is always up to date. Um, the technology behind this uh, you know, is, is secure. It uses this transport layer security services. Um, so there's, you know, there's no data um, you know, security risks in that regard. Um, you can, yeah, number six, maybe not so important for, for this uh, particular application, but you can find the app through your browsers and you can link it for, um, you know, for other use cases uh, so that if you, if you Google for, for a solution, you would also find it. It's, it's capable of doing that. Um, point number seven around re-engaging, which is actually, um, yeah, quite, quite a useful capability. In the past, you know, if we distributed work orders, we would have sent the SMS to somebody to say that, um, you know, there's a new work order that you need to that you need to go and look at and download to your app and, and work on it. Um, 
progressive web apps now supports full uh, push notifications and you'll see some of that in the in the um, chat app that uh, Moritz is going to demonstrate so uh, you can you can use push notifications with it you can install it as a local app on your device and have it on your home screen and then also this uh, these progressive web apps are also you know accessible you know as you would do with any other web page through a, through a URL link so it's got the feel of a web page but it acts like a like a mobile app, and it uh, yeah in our case has really brought a lot of benefit. We've been able to to churn out uh, very useful apps in a much reduced time compared to previous apps that we developed in, in in older technologies. Yeah, so that that's all we wanted to share just to give some background in terms of the technology behind what Moritz and and, and Ilan's going to show you. Um, and I'm going to just give over to Martinez now to first just give us some context into where does the specific uh, functionality that we talk about today fit into the business processes we, we use. Thank you. Stefan, maybe just before we get Martinez to share some of his thoughts, I forgot to maybe just uh, remind everyone that they can, they're welcome to ask a question in the Q&A option available. So at the bottom of your screen, you should see a and a button. <laughs> And you're welcome to post any questions then towards the end of this webinar we'll we'll address those questions thank you martinez thank you dirk um and yeah i see there's already a first question from uh, munirachi from ucl so munirachi will uh, uh answer that one shortly um yeah so like i said the last time uh, i the previous session i was the only uh, non-research and development uh, presenter but today you would have seen we've roped in Elan that's also in our projects team. So uh, at least I'm not uh, alone on the delivery side today. So as Stefan said, just quickly want to put all of these apps into a bit of context um, and, and, and see where it will add, add benefits. Um, and very important, the first point to, to just re-emphasize again, you know, we still need proper processes and we still need uh, the people, skilled people to get and gain the real value from these apps. I, um, I, I read an interesting uh, line the other day uh, with everyone just wanting to use apps. Uh, they said, well, maybe we must reclassify our brains as an app uh, because then everyone will start using it again. Um, so we still we still need to apply thinking and processes uh, while using the apps and um, now it's really technology now i always say it's just an enabler uh, yep it's not the silver bullet but it is very powerful if applied correctly in the right processes and then just quickly um, you know, as we were preparing for today i thought let me just share one or two learnings you know, that i've seen uh, um, the last couple of months with these apps. Um, now I'm just going to share three with you. So, so one, and Stefan also touched on that, you know, is the usability of the apps, you know, the look and feel, the ease of use, and uh, the quick onboarding of users. Um, so making adoption so much quicker and uh, you know, also you know, playing a huge role in change management. I think we always know we always underestimate you know, change management and the effect you know, new apps and technology uh, have on people. Then also you know, taking something as an idea and then deploying that you know, into uh, the live environment. I think you know, the shorter you can make that time, you know, the better for the business. Uh, you, know, you don't want to uh, get an idea and, and now it's you know, eight months later and we only get something that we can deploy. That's so very important. And with these progressive web, web apps, like Stefan said, we've really been able to, to minimize the time from idea to actual deployment. And then the last one is just you know, keep it focused. Um, you know, if you have a specific problem to solve, let's solve those one or two problems or issues with specific apps. Don't try and now develop this big app that's always replacing the Anki or a CMMS system. So let's keep it focused and let's solve specific problems. So just to recap, you know, where today's session fits into the work 
order cycle. As you can see, the last time uh, we covered blocks one and two, uh, service request app, looking at work identification and validation. And today, Yelan and uh, Moritz will take us through the apps. That's going to touch on daily allocation, execution, and also a little bit in terms of um, actually starting to do feedback on uh, work orders. There are. I think the main uh, speakers for today is uh, for sure Yelan and Moritz. Moritz, I'm going to hand over to you to uh, take us through these uh, absolutely amazing apps that you've developed. Thanks, Martinez. Um, and, and thanks to Yelan for agreeing to, to do this with me. Uh, we decided that it's, it's a bit of a risk to have two presenters going through the apps, but the reward that we get by getting a a female and a softer voice uh, presenting it um, will definitely outweigh the, the risk. Um, so as you can see there, I'm, I'm Maris Astron and um, you can hopefully see Elan as well once she starts talking. Um, and we're gonna take you through two apps um, today. And the one is the, the work arranger and the other one is the field engineering app. Um, two apps that we see playing a, a massive role in, in um, work execution. Um, Elan will quickly introduce the work arranger and, and just show us how that can help supervisors and, and technicians um, or tradespeople um, manage their work. And then I will quickly take us through um, the field engineering app where we can see how that's going to really enable us to, to do work in a, in a simpler, fast and in, in a mobile, mobile way in future. Um, so Elan, I'm going to hand over to you, um, but I'm going to stay unmuted if you, if you need any help or if you want to double check something or if you um yeah if you just want want a buddy by, by your side <laughs> thanks Moritz um hi everyone um as Moritz said I'm Ilan Kutsia and I'll take you through the work arranger app and its current features so the video that's playing on the screen right now is basically what I'll be talking about um so typically this screen is what you will see as a supervisor to sort of manage your work the first tab the unallocated work as it says, shows all work that's assigned to your section or department, um, but has not been assigned to a, a specific staff member in your section. So um, in this tab, you'll be able to allocate um, staff members for certain work. The second, the second tab shows all allocated work. So those are work orders that you have allocated to certain staff members or tradespeople. Um, and here you can actually see progress on various work orders. There is a search and filter, or there are capabilities. So if you want to look for specific work orders or yeah, any filtering um, capabilities are available. Then the final tab shows work that is actually allocated to you. So in this case, to the demo user. Um, but this tab is what will um, typically be seen by a tradesperson or a technician. Um, and this is work that they need to then action. Um, so if you click on a specific work order, it actually opens some extra detail in the side panel there, um, like contact details um, and locations. And those are actually links. So if you click on those links, it will actually take you to an email, to your mailbox or Google Maps, depending on which link you click. Um, and if you click on uh, the detail button, then it takes you to even more detail um, for that specific work order, such as documents or any tasks that need to be completed on that specific work order. Um, you can also see status history. So what statuses the, that work order has been in, who made those changes and when. Um, and if that work order is, so, sorry, I'm going too fast for the video, as you can see, but <laughs> there's the details. I'm sharing, but I thought you were seeing a different video to what I'm sharing at the moment, Tilan. No, no, no. <laughs> but it's good. Um, but yeah, there you can see documents and status history. So yeah, there's, this is all very configurable. So you can, you know, choose what you want to see. Um, and then if this work is assigned to you, then you can actually navigate to the field engineering app via which where you can actually execute the work. So that's the app that Moritz will take you through in more detail. Um, finally, so Moritz and I, we did a little bit of a chat, but then the, at the bottom right-hand corner, you can see there's a chat icon, um, that blue little icon where you can actually chat 
to people in different like in different groups depending on yeah it's governed by roles so depending on what role you have you can actually chat to team members or your supervisor and this chat app is then used you know for any specific queries so that you can see you can actually um, dictate which groups you want to send your chat to um, so yeah as you can see in this video mode it's now just as a supervisor and tradesperson just asking a couple of questions and yeah and if you have any technical questions, please ask Moritz. <laughs> no, no, that's, that's very well done, Ilana. And thanks for, for bringing that up. I think what, what we're trying to, to do here is to give the artisans a WhatsApp-like or a Telegram or a Signal-like experience um, to, to get more information while they're in the apps. And we're really trying to integrate this into to many of the apps. Um, so in the previous webinar, uh, you would have seen that this was already in the, in the Search Request app as well. So the person who requested the work can also be a po possible participant um, in the chat. So if you get to, for example, I was speaking to Gert um, yesterday, and um, if someone logged something for the for the boom um, at the gate, let's just say the boom isn't isn't working, and you get there and you see, oh, but it is actually working, and it's just not opening completely, you can quite quickly engage with them and get some more information rather than having to phone them, see if they're available. And the nice thing about this as well is the traceability and the, the history that's that's stored. Um, so something that we we aren't showing you at the moment is that all, all these chats are archived. So once a work order is closed, we put it in a PDF that can then be reviewed later um, or the chat can be opened up again. So there's no need to try and remember what someone said two weeks ago, three weeks ago, when you were planning the work, you can actually see that whole history um, on the chat um, link to the work order as well. Okay, so that's the chat app. Um, I'm quickly going to go into the Field Engineer app, um, and there, there's quite a lot to, to tell you about, but I'm just going to touch on a couple of points. Um, before we start, just looking at, at um, a few of the main things. So as Stefan said, this is a PWA or a progressive web app, and um, the main reason why we went for that initially was to enable the offline capabilities. But as we started developing this, we realized that we've got so many other um, avenues that were open to us um, as a result of this. And one of the main ones is definitely the, the native mobile features, uh, such as using the phone's GPS and the camera, um, and then also native notifications. So as you would get a, a WhatsApp message um, on, your, on your phone or even on your, on your laptop, um, if you're using a Windows computer, I'm not sure what it's like on Apple, um, but where you get the slide in notifications um, on the bottom right, um, these notifications also um, present themselves in that way. So you really get an app-like feeling. Um, and it's also, um, as Stefan said, it's, it's built for mobile, but it runs um, on desktop as well. So it makes makes the development a lot easier. So we do go in with a mobile first approach, um, but the clever people who, who design the, um, the SDKs and so on, they make sure that um, you can interact with it um, quite easily on a, on a um, desktop device as well. So then just going into the field engineering app in um, well specifically, so we've got this nice matrix that can be set up for, for statuses and types of work um, in which you can control feature sets. Um, I'll touch on that just now. And then there's a continuous sync with the server um, when you are connected. Um, so there's almost a layer between the EMS and the device um, on, the, on the server or in the cloud, if I, if I can call it that, um, to make sure that um, this app only syncs to, to that server. Um, so as soon as you do something, even though you have not um, committed that transaction into the EMS or the CMMS, um, it's stored onto, onto the server. Then we obviously have media capturing and, and uploading capabilities, role-based permissions, which is, I think, becoming more and more of a, of a I think it was a, a nice to have earlier, but now it's becoming a need to have. So certain people need to be able to do certain things in certain apps based on, on their roles. Um, and then I'll touch on, on various features uh, that we have at the moment um, or that, that we already have in the film engineering app. And then obviously um, we will be building those out quite rapidly um, as, we, as we move on. So the first thing is the, the feature type of work and status combinations. So yeah, you can see on that or in that little video that um, we've got a post of um, of features and, and functionality that we can enable in in the app, um, and then you can say, for example, those features need to be available in these statuses and these types of work. So what that means is that you can set this up to have a very tailor-made or a or very curated experience um, 
or when the person logs into the app. So it's one app, but when you go in, depending on the type of work and the status, and I guess there's a, there's a role component to it as well, the person will only need to do what he sees there. So it's one app um, that can, can basically be, be molded and, and set up and configured um, so that when you go in, you know that you might have 10 things to do or you might only have two things to do. And it's not really only based on your role, but it's also based on what's needed in that step of the process. Um, if we then move on to the next one, that's that continuous sync with a server when connected. And what maybe I should just quickly talk through the video. There you can see on the left-hand side that the top one is already on the device. The middle one is on the server, but not on this device. Um, and that last one is only in the cloud. So the one that's on the device, I can interact with. We've got all the information that we need on the device. Um, whereas with the second one, um, once we go into that, you'll see that that's already been started on a different device. Um, but you can go and fetch that um, version of the work order and you can work on it. So say, for example, someone was in the field and they just performed the work that they needed to do there, but they want to do the admin tonight. Um, they can pause it. And if they are back in the guest house, uh, for example, they can open up their laptop and whatever was in their phone, quite easily get it onto their laptop without syncing anything to the EMS yet, um, and then continue that and submit it from there. Um, the main benefit of this is obviously that work done is never lost. Um, so say your phone gets stolen um, or something happens that you that you lose what you or lose the device that you did the work on, you've actually got all that information stored on the server. Um, and as Stefan said, um, with the offline capabilities, um, you can you can store a whole lot of information. Um, the, the case that he was referring to with 500 images um, stored offline and then period, periodically syncing back online um, to have all of that on the server. And this obviously helps with the completion of a work order as well. So that all the information that's stored on the device doesn't now need, need to get pushed up into the cloud or onto the server when you submit it, but it's already um, almost trickling through to the server as you're doing it. Um, if we then go into the features, um, I've just listed a few, well, not a few, I've listed quite a quite a few here yeah, um, that you can do. And the first one is just the, the AIV activities, so the asset identification and verification activities. In the video down the left, we can see how we're completing attributes to make sure that your asset register is kept up to date. And this is one of the features. So for example, reviewing attributes is one of the features that you can enable. So for a certain type of work, you can say when the artisan goes out, this is what we want, want him to do. We want to make sure that um, the configuration of certain machines is still the same. But then we've also got the capability to add, update, and remove assets um, as you're going out into the field. So if you get to a new site and you need to onboard a few um, assets, you pre-configure those asset types. And when you're there, um, you enter all of the information that is needed. And I'm quickly going to go on to my last video, uh, which is just showing the work task viewing, creation, and completion. This is actually just the, the completion of the task. So that I can see that I've got four tasks on my work order, um, and I can quite easily um, navigate to the screen with the tasks, and then I can see where they are, and I can, uh, and I can complete them. So yeah, I've got uh, task feedback classifications and just whether the, the um, task is complete or not. Um, and those can also be simplified I do mention it there at the bottom in a condensed view um, to, to reduce this to a yes, no kind of scenario um, where there is some logic in the background to auto select some of those fields. Um, and if I go into a task and I'm not exactly sure what it's about, I can go to details. I can see a lot of additional information on that. I can see if there are any spares um, configured for that task. I can add spares if I've got that um, feature enabled. And then if documents are set up, I can add documents like you can in the service request app. So yeah, you can complete the work, save it. And when you navigate back to um, the, the dashboard, you'll see that I had a total of four tasks to do and I can, I've still got one left. So it's quite easy to keep track, quite easy to keep track of what's going on. And then as I mentioned um, earlier, and um, we've got access to a chat. This is a different one that, than what Ilan showed you earlier. And then when I'm done, I can simply submit the field inspection. I can choose the status that it needs to go to. Um, and I can submit it. Once it's submitted, it's syncing the last bit of data from my device to the server. And once we're happy that everything is on the server, we can remove that local field inspection data from, from my device. Um, and you would remember that I had three 
work orders when I came into this initially. That one is now gone and I can move on to, to my other work. Then just in terms of, of a few things that I didn't show you now, it's just work identification. So if you are on site and you see, shucks, there's a pipe leaking, um, in most cases, you've actually got access to the, the work that's already on, um, on that site. So you can see, is it a duplicate? No, it's not. I can quickly log a work order for that um, and fill in quite a, quite a lot of information to make sure that it's, it's set up correctly. Um, open work verification. If I then go and, and look at the open work and I see, okay, no, someone has already logged this pipe, but there's something else for a drain, but the drain seems fixed. Um, I can just cancel that work order. Well, not cancel, I can request to cancel it um, and say that this is no longer relevant. Then over inspections. Um, uh, if you are, for example, a supervisor, um, you can do you can get a work order just to go and do over inspections. So you can look at um, work that was completed in the last X number of days um, or whatever period it is. And then you can actually confirm that the work was done according to standard. If not, you can create follow-up work orders um, or callbacks for the artisans to come complete that work. I briefly touched on it, but the work task spare adding viewing up viewing and updating capability is there. So as you're using spares on a task, um, we can update those. Then if you are online, you can also look at the condition monitoring history. So uh, monitoring point readings um, on that specific asset. So if you wanna see whether the performance has deteriorated um, or what the profile of that machine looks like um, according to the monitoring points um, that are being collected. It's just something that I can quickly mention is obviously there's a big drive to do that using IoT devices. Um, but then also, if there are tasks that are linked to monitoring points, you can also fill in those tasks um, using this app and update those monitoring point readings as well. And then lastly, as I mentioned quickly, the condensed view is just a very simplified view. Sometimes you don't want to overwhelm uh, the person working with the app with six drop downs and a, it's complete and, and those kind of things. And whether it's past, you might just want to have your tasks in a, in a yes, no format. And you can do that. And then also we've got the ability to keep tasks or uh, certain tasks read only. And um, so if you want to execute a work order in different stages, um, then you can do that as well. So say you've got 10 tasks, you might only want to make five editable for now. And then later someone else needs to do the other five. And um, we can do that as well. So that is, um, that is the field engineering app at a, you know, explaining quite a, quite a rapid pace. Um, but I'm sure there, there will be some questions. And if there aren't any in this session, uh, you guys are welcome to, to follow up with me and, and we can elaborate on that. Um, so yeah, that's it from me. Excellent, Maritz. Yeah, thanks, Maritz, uh, Ilan, for those, those demonstrations and explanations of the apps. Certainly something to be excited about. Certainly something that I think a lot of our clients out there will Get a lot of value from and we'll be looking to adopt and you know as we saw with those research questions in the beginning of the webinar i think there's a lot of people that's currently looking at where mobile apps can make a significant difference in their business and and you know certainly these are some examples that could could uh, you know drive digitization and, and digital innovation okay so let's quickly shift our attention to questions uh i don't actually see any open questions at this stage so maybe let's just give the the panel, uh, the, yeah, not the panelists, the attendees to this webinar. Maybe a one moment if there's uh, perhaps some 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 last minute questions that somebody wants to to to, to open. I see Brian Chupa just quickly uh, popped in a, a question here. So, how will this work with the technician space on site? Who will lock the tasks, and what kind of reports will we get from this? Will the site have access to this? So it's I think. Uh, Questions around, you know, workflows. Questions around, you know, people working offline versus online. So, you know, the complexity around all of that and how the information will flow. So, I think maybe Moritz, let's let's start with your your answer and let's see if someone else can elaborate on that as well. Um, so, what we try and do is we try and, and see which version of the work order you are in, and it's it's basically a, a last win. I'm sorry, a last commit wins. Um, but we do have some some logic in place to um, say, for example, you're not working on the on the most recent version of this work. Or do you want to overwrite it, or do you want to get the most recent version um, of it? So obviously, that's always going to be a, a challenge. And as Stefan um, often often says to me, is you need, you need to think of it as a as a piece of paper that you're passing around. And if if you now start making copies of the piece of paper, um, you are going to run into trouble. But the nice thing 
with these apps is that we can we can really elaborate on the or not elaborate we can we can build in some more logic um for those cases um to to see for example while you're doing it to let you know that someone else has already got the the work order in their hands um and obviously you need to have the right processes in place to route this to the right person at the right time and um, with PR, how it works at the moment is that you can only work on it if the work order is assigned to you and um, so as soon as that work order is assigned to someone else um, we will notify you um, of that and then obviously that's something that the process needs to take care of um, we can't have, have 10 versions of the of the work order on different devices and, and not having the most recent one available maybe uh, uh, if I could... so, sorry stefan you, you carry on sorry martinez if i could just come in on that um, so we must remember that um on the onkey ems still remains the system of record as well for the work order so um all the history and all the activities around the work order will eventually flow back to the ems or it uh, would originate from there so um you know that the, the, the Text on on site uh, dealing with a work order that information that capture will flow back to to the EMS and at that point it will then be part of the data that is available for reporting and business business intelligence as well so there's no no data that will just reside on the mobile device itself in the long run 100 uh, percent that's uh, exactly what I also wanted to uh, to mention so Stefan yeah thanks for clarifying that Excellent. So thanks for the answers. Um, there's currently no open questions. Uh, I think we're a couple of minutes um, ahead of schedule. Uh, I think there should have been a server that might have popped up there on your side. Please, please take some time to, to complete that. And my understanding is there should be a question about future you know, topics, perhaps, that you would like us to, to present webinars on. Obviously, we're always looking for these kind of topics. We'd love to engage with you out there. And if there's anything that can, can can add to that a topic that we can add to that reach out to us and we'll certainly want to set up uh, webinars and a series of webinars perhaps that is aligned with what you, your questions is uh, and what's relevant to you um yeah i think we'll we'll Derek. sorry yes. sorry. sorry i think there's one more question in the chat section if you just want to have a look at that oh, please sorry about that uh, let me just get my chat going here. Uh, uh, Martin asking, can we disable the ability of the field engineer to raise their own work orders rather to request for the work order and get approval from supervisor or manager? So it's, it's, it's all around the approval process um, after generating perhaps a service request, Moritz? Yeah, so, so obviously we've got that avenue to use a service request app for that. But then creating a new work order does not necessarily mean that you're creating it and you go out and execute it. It's it's more just logging up and you request that's probably in a, in a waiting approval status and then needs to be verified and then um, planned and scheduled. And the only way that in the fuel engineering app that you will be able to execute it is if someone then goes and assigns it to you and puts them in the right status and the right type of work. So once again, depending on your setup, um, we do try and make provision if, for example, you want the staff member to be allocated on creation. That's a, a setting that, that we can enable, but it would typically not be set there. It would typically go into a bucket. Someone will review it, assign it to the right section, get, get a relevant staff member, and then plan it um, so that when it is ready for execution, it will appear on your list. Excellent. Yeah, so a lot of uh, process flow and complexities that, that obviously the people is asking out there, and I think that's all relevant questions. And it comes back almost to the discussion that Martinez had. You know, we, we, you know, we've got mobile tech, but we need to still understand the process and make sure that the process makes sense. And then, you know, latching on with what Maurice also said, you know, currently the new mobile apps that comes out needs, I mean, it's a necessity that it's all it's role-based, that we can actually tailor-made some experiences for certain audiences to make sure that they can only follow a certain a certain process in, in, in the execution. Um, excellent. So the uh, Jolene just reminded me that the server will pop up when we exit the, or complete the, um, this webinar. And then, yeah, please, please take the time, if you don't mind, to think of some other topics that you'd like us to, to, to have a series on. And we'd love to, to set up then a, a webinar series to address those questions. I just want to thank again the, the panelists today. Uh, they're doing a great job, you know, Moritz as, as product owner for, 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 for our set of app, uh, mobile applications, you know, I think we're taking a massive step forward in terms of the technology we're putting out there and the, 
the real uh, asset management challenges that we're currently solving and under the great leadership and guidance from Stefan Swanepoel, making sure that the whole uh, you know, vision for our enterprise asset management systems makes, makes sense and actually address the needs out there. So thanks so much. Thank you very much for joining us for this webinar and I hope you guys enjoyed it and I hope to see you next time. Bye-bye.